banking crisis is not over. In fact, I think it's just beginning. And Not entirely surprising given what is going on and given what you're about to hear from Andy Sheckman as he talks about what he's been experiencing on the retail level in gold and silver. And with that said, let's pass it over to him now so that you can hear more from this week's physical silver market report. Once again, it is that time for our Tuesday physical silver report with Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin. So Andy, appreciate you making some time. Good to see you this morning. And how are you today, my friend? Always good to see you, brother. I'm I'm hanging in there. Thank you. It's been the craziest uh, three weeks that I can ever remember, and in, in my whole career, literally. Um, but we're surviving. We're hanging in there. It's good to be back, and thanks for having me. Well, as you come back on, we're recording Tuesday morning here, and we do have gold futures over two thousand dollars an ounce. We've seen. Price touched that level a couple of times in the past few weeks, break through a little bit and then come back down. We'll see where we go from here on this one. But I'm curious, how are people responding to that um, in the physical retail gold market? And we can touch on silver as well. Yeah, I mean, in, in a way, Chris, that is is um, unlike anything that this industry has ever seen. This is a whole different thing. As we've talked about before, this isn't about making money. This is about protecting what you've worked your life to to obtain and to safeguard. And it's one thing when when people on our side of the table speak to the frailty of the markets in terms of their fundamentals in the stock market or the bond market or the real estate market. It's, it's another thing altogether when we think about our money in the bank being at risk. And that has ignited a fuse of concern that I've never seen. I mean, you can look at the U.S. Mint numbers as an example, their gold coin sales, we put in uh, Eagles and Buffaloes combined to over 288,000 ounces in March. That's the highest monthly total since October 1998. And on a year to date basis, gold coins, have, they've sold almost 600,000 of them. And that's the highest first quarter since 1999, when everyone was waiting for the computer systems to blow up uh, humanity in the Y2K debacle. And that Believe it or not, I, I, I was actually in the industry back then uh, during Y2K, and, and that was pretty pretty crazy, too. I think our company sold as many one-tenth ounce eagles as anyone in the country back then because people were concerned. They were afraid that the computer systems are going to blow everything up. Well, the common thread here is that concern about what's happening has really dominated this entire landscape, um, and, and it's... it's um, it's 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 unlike anything really that I can explain to you in terms of what it's really like, but the U.S. mint numbers I think kind of bear witness to that. Yeah, and speaking of the banking issues, it was interesting because we see uh, obviously in the silver community uh, a lot of people's favorite banker, even Jamie Dimon, saying the banking crisis is not over and will cause repercussions for years to come. Certainly, we'll see where the Fed goes with its interest rates in the next couple of meetings. Um, not an ideal situation for the Fed based on whatever they do, but just fascinating to see that this is now on the front of CNBC and I think people are starting to notice and as a result, turning to gold and silver. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, I mean, speaking of JP Morgan, 33 tons of gold were withdrawn from their vault this week. You know, and that that's that's uh, as big as it really gets. In fact, it might be one of the biggest sales in their history, uh, selling 1.7 million ounces of gold. And they're, you know, you can see the cartel really trying to defend these lines in the sand. That the two thousand dollars is a, is a big a big line, and and the, these big banks are not immune to the problems that we see either. You know, you look at the derivative position of a bank like. JP Morgan, at last I looked, and, and again, this is from memory, they were over $50 trillion in had a position in derivatives of over $50 trillion. So yeah, these banks, everyone's going to notice it's not just the regional banks that are going to have issues. I think it's the big banks too. But what's really crazy about all of this is that the public, because of what's happening in the banking sister, is, uh, sector, is being driven out of the regional banks into banks like JP Morgan with these massive balance sheets and these massive derivative exposures 
And as Biden told us here recently this last week, the banking crisis is not over. In fact, I think it's just beginning. And we're starting to see, I think, the reverberations through the banking sector as I don't know how many billions of dollars were withdrawn out of the market uh, just this last week. In fact, yes, I do know $126 billion were withdrawn out of just this past week, $225 billion in the last three weeks. So yet you can see money is being yanked out of the banks and you know going into precious metals, going into brokerage accounts where people are putting their money into money markets which is, is higher than, than you know, what you're able to get at, at, your, at your local bank. And so the stress and the strain that's being put on the banking system <clears throat> is what is driving this anxiety in the industry, Chris. And, and you know, similar to the theme that I've been talking to you about for a very long time relating to um, supply, it's all drying up again and premiums are going to rise again. And uh, I will tell you that you know, when we first talked about this a week ago or two weeks ago, I told you that it was, it, it, we had seen an expansion, right? But that it was a largely, at least at the very beginning, largely existing clients who were, who were really doubling down because their beliefs were validated. In the past 30 days, my company has added 11,790 new clients in 30 days, almost 12,000 clients in 30 days. I'll tell you, that's more than we would add in two years most of the time. Honest to God, 11,790 new clients in 30 days. That is exactly what's happening. The public is for the very, very, very first time in my career waking up. And, you know, a lot of the things that I've been talking about for three years are now all of a sudden everyone, including Fox and CNN, is talking about. And people are starting to realize that the dollar for the very first time, not even just the banking system, but the dollar is the Achilles heel, that the dollar is being really forsaken by the majority of the world. And it's accelerating at a speed that is, um, I, I think this is this should be a wake up call for everyone in this country. Now, when we talk about silver, look, you know, silver is, is, is still not even close in my mind. It is the the most undervalued asset on the planet. And the big money understands this as 4.8 million ounces of silver were taken off the COMEX this last week. And so, you know, you're seeing a continuation of the drawdown uh, of things like silver. And at, at $24.15, that's really the, the technical level. We close above 24.15 and there's a lot of gap on the upside. And this is a, a number that they're really trying to defend. You can see it. They keep trying to keep it below 24.15. You know, I'm not a big technical analysis guy in the rigged market. I think it's a it's a flawed um, metric when the market's rigged. But nonetheless, the majority of the world trades via technical analysis. And, and when you look at 24.15, it is a big number. And if we clear it, I think certainly there's a lot of room to the upside. But again, when we're talking about prices. Uh, I, I really do believe that um, I, I really do believe that it, it's it's masking the real demand, whether it be the retail demand, which is literally off the charts, or even the, the big money, which is quietly using suppressed price to, to drain the exchanges, 4.8 million ounces in a week. That ought to tell you that there's big demand behind gold and silver right now by the biggest money in the world. And, and it is because of the global de-dollarization. It is because of the ridiculous brain dead monetary policy of the Fed trying to backstop the banks and, and the fragility in the entire sector. And the fact that we are meddling with, with elections and, and, and indicting uh, former presidents when the current administration is literally a criminal cartel and yet we are so far off course that I think the rest of the world is looking at us right now as laughing stock.